Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Review. Please visit comlexflashcards.com for daily updates to help you prepare for the Comlex board exam and for medical school. That's www.comlexflashcards.com. Now let's review infectious diseases. What are some of the antibiotics you should avoid in pregnancy? Definitely avoid sulfonamides which can cause carnicterus, metronidazole which can uh, cause some type of mutagenesis, Ribavirin is teratogenic, griseofulvin, chloramphenicol, metronidazole, erythromycin uh, causing the acute cholestatic hepatitis, fluoroquinolones causing cartilage damage, and uh, aminoglycosides causing ototoxicity. Those are some of the key ones you want to remember for the board exam. Now, aside from that, let's review some of the high yield antibiotics that you're likely to be asked about on the boards. What about uh, cephalosporins? Well, clinical use for uh, first generations include PECK, that's the mnemonic, Proteus, E. coli, and Klebsiella. PECK, that's the mnemonic, and Cephazolin and Cephalexin are the two common types. For second generation, uh, H-E-N-P-E-C-K-S, such as Haemophilus, Enterobacter, Neisseria, uh, Proteus, E. coli, Klebsiella, and Serratia are all the um, bugs that the second generation covers. So Cephotixine, uh, Cephaclor, those are the key. Okay. Again, let's review that. H-E-N-P-E-C-K-S, so Haemophilus, Enterobacter and Neisseria and the others are the same as generation 1 the Proteus E. coli Klebsiella third generation will have coverage of serious gram-negative infections resistant to other beta-lactams also for meningitis such as ceftriaxone you want to use this because it crosses the blood-brain barrier um, and ceph ceph Tazidine for Pseudomonas is a big one, and Ceftriaxone for gonorrhea. Fourth generation is Cefepine, which has protection against Pseudomonas, and the general toxicity for Cephalosporins is hypersensitivity reactions. Also, some patients have nephrotoxicity from the aminoglycosides and disulfurite ram like reaction with uh, ethanol. Um, are common, but the hypersensitivity reactions are the main ones. Now, patient comes to you with Klebsiella, um, Pseudomonas, and Serratia. This is a combination. What medication would you give them? The Klebsiella and the Pseudomonas, you can think about, you know, cephalosporins, but again, they, this person has uh, Serratia coverage as well. What would you need? Well, is trionam is the key one covers gram negative rods uh, no activity against gram positives or anaerobes and it's usually non-toxic sometimes occasional GI upset occurs um, it's synergistic with aminoglycosides and it binds to the PBP3 causing an inhibition of cell wall synthesis but the key point for the boards is serratia pseudomonas klebsiella is trionam is the answer what about a patient who comes into you with gram-negative rods, anaerobes, um, enterobacter? Here you're going to think about imipenems. Imipenems are going to be, you know, used for gram-positive cocci, gram-negative rods, and anaerobes. Okay. Um, and an example is meropenem, which has a reduced risk of seizures. Uh, as compared to some of the other ones um, and GI distress skin rash are some of the common toxicities for the penems. What about um, a patient who comes to you with uh, pseudomembranous colitis? Well definitely you're thinking about um, you know one of the drugs that you want to use is going to be vancomycin and here you want to watch out for the nephrotoxicity, ototoxicity, and thrombophlebitis, and diffuse flushing called the red man syndrome. Um, patients with vancomycin have, um, you know, generally multi-drug resistant gram-positive organisms, 
like Staph aureus, etc. Aminoglycosides. When would you use aminoglycosides? Well, severe gram-negative rod infections. It's also synergistic with beta-lactams, as we mentioned, and for neomycin, use for bowel surgery is very common. Now, this brings us to an interesting question about the toxicity. This also has nephrotoxicity, ototoxicity, and um, it's a teratogen as well. So just remember that gentamicin, um, the neomycin, and tobramycin, as well as streptomycin are all examples here. Um, and that's a high yield. You want to remember gram-negative rods and neomycin for bowel surgery. Tetracyclines, well this has a mnemonic, vacuum the bedroom, so you're going to have vibrio, acne, chlamydia, urea plasma, um, urolyticum, mycoplasma, tularemia, H. pylori, Bor Borrelia burgdorferi, rickettsia, all these with tetracycline, doxycycline, um, and again the main side effect is GI distress, discoloration of the teeth, and it's contraindicated in pregnancy. Um, for the macrolides, you have the use mainly in mycoplasma, legionella, chlamydia, and Neisseria. So erythromycin, azithromycin, and the toxicity is going to be prolonged QT period, GI discomfort, and acute cholestatic hepatitis as the key toxicities. But for URIs, pneumonias, STDs, think about erythromycin, azithromycin uh, for covering also mycoplasma, legionella, chlamydia, and Neisseria. And again, some of the other high yield antibiotics, clindamycin for pseudomembranous colitis, um, that's one of the toxicities of clindamycin. And again, it's used to treat anaerobe infections above the diaphragm. Sulfonamides are used for gram-positive, gram-negative, um, chlamydia, also for simple UTIs. That's some of the most uh, you know, common uses for sulfonamides. And they basically cause a hypersensitivity reaction or hemolysis if a patient is G6PD deficient. Trimethoprim can cause the megaloblastic anemia or leukopenia if used excessively, and you can stop this with folinic acid. Um, it's used in combination with sulfonamides for uh, treating UTIs, Shigella, Salmonella, okay, so pneumocystis, um, Carini. So you can use, um, you know, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole for all those things Shigella, Salmonella, recurrent UTIs, PCP. The sulfur drugs have allergies. Um, patients who don't tolerate these drugs should not be given sulfur drugs um, such as sulfalazine, sulfonylureas, thiazides, acetazolamide, and furosemide. Now what about fluoroquinolones? Well, definitely they'll cover uh, the gram-negative rods of urinary and GI tracts including pseudomonas. So Cipro, um, norfloxacin, uh, moxifloxacin, it's a big uh, medication used for pneumonia, GI upset, super infections, skin rashes are all uh, toxicities and definitely contraindicated in pregnant women and in children because of the damage to the cartilage. Metronidazole, the mnemonic, get cap on the metro. So uh, it treats Giardia, Entamoeba, Trichomonas, Gardenella, anaerobes, and um, again it's used with bismuth and amoxicillin for triple therapy. And the toxicity is disulfiram like reaction with alcohol. Um, another medication you definitely want to know for the boards is polymyxin, which is um, used for resistant gram negative infections and it's it can cause acute renal tubular necrosis as well as neurotoxicity. Now that was a board review of some of the high yield antibiotics you may see on the board exam. Good luck in your preparation for the boards.